Rickenbacker 330 electric guitar, a legendary character guitar from the 1960s, which has now been made available for use in your productions by Ample Sound. Hi folks, I'm Mike, and I hope you're well. Pete Townsend, Paul Weller, Johnny Marr, The Edge, all players of the Rickenbacker 330 electric guitar. If you bought this guitar at the moment, it would likely cost you a few thousand dollars. However, it can virtually be yours via a new plugin from Ample Sound at an absolute fraction of that cost. We'll talk later on in this video about a great deal you can get on this virtual instrument at the moment. But first of all, I want to let you know that at the beginning of this video, all of the guitar work you heard in the demo was created using this plugin. So let's dive in and take a look. At the beginning of this video, we heard this guitar in its most basic state using the sustain sound. I played a few arpeggios and it sounded like this. And when we're playing arpeggios like that, it's reasonably easy to get an authentic sound. After all, we're just playing actual recordings or samples of an actual Rickenbacker 330. We're triggering each of those recordings when we press the notes on our keyboard, yeah? Now, when we are playing arpeggios, just a basic sound like that, as I say, we can recreate an authentic sound. But on the guitar, we do much more than play arpeggios, of course. There's many ways in which guitarists express themselves with articulations on the guitar, okay? Different ways of playing the notes and different things we can do to the notes. So we need to have articulations available to us if we're gonna try and fool the listener that this is a real guitar. Now there's a few articulations available in all ample sound guitars. Most of them are the same across from one to the other. There can be slight differences as we'll, as we'll see in a moment. We can see them all down here, okay, with these icons, but we can also play them on our actual piano keyboard, okay? When we press them, it's gonna change the sound of the guitar in some way. So these are called key switches. Let's just quickly go through what they are right now. We had the sustained one, which we already heard. There's also natural harmonics. We've also got a palm mute. I used that in the intro. Yeah, and then we've got a slide in. Really nice that. Then we've got a legato slide. This is where we play one note and then play another one afterwards. It will slide from one to the other. Now note there that when we hear this, we hear the sound of uh, the, the frets being rolled over with the finger, okay? It's not like doing a pitch bend or something like that. We're actually hearing the individual notes in between, yeah? That's really important. That adds to the authenticity. We also have a hammer on. That's where you just sort of play one note. You actually pick one note and then you play another one without picking. And then we also have this. This is different with this particular instrument. I haven't seen it in the other Ample Sound plugins. I haven't played all of them, but I haven't seen it in the others. So Morden is another kind of articulation we've got here. Have a listen. Yeah, it's just like a little kind of a trill effect, yeah? It could be a real time saver that rather than programming something like that in using sort of hammer-ons and things, you can just play it there. Very, very handy indeed. Now, one really important key switch in my mind is this one here, C sharp. And we use this to set the actual hand position. We can see the hand position currently up here. It's the guitar's being played around about the 14th fret, okay? That will automatically happen as we play, but we can also set it manually. So if we press this key switch, you'll see that some of the other keys turn yellow here, and that um, is how we select our hand position. So I'll just press it and press a position, and you can see that we move down to 
the zero position there. I'll just do a few others. You can see the hand position is moving around. This is really important on the guitar. With different hand positions, different things are actually possible, okay? And also, it does change the sound of notes because I don't know if you know this, but the same note can be played in various places on a guitar and it will sound slightly different in tone even though it's the same pitch. So, for example, I can play a high E here. Yeah, and that's currently being played on the open E string, um, the highest pitched E string that is. Now, I'll change the position here, to say the second position there. I'll play it again. Now, that same note is now being played on another string, on the B string. So, listen to the two. Oops, sorry. Yeah, and another one again. Is being played on the G string there. So we get a different tone with different positions. If you're going to be programming guitar parts, it's really important to, to make use of these, in my opinion, to get the most authentic sound. Now, some of the other things you can do, apart from just play the notes on the keyboard, is actually you've got some sound effects up here. And all of that kind of thing can add to the authenticity as well. Now, in the sort of second part of my demo where there's bass and drums and things came in, I used a number of different uh, methods, some different articulations. I also moved the hand position to help with the authenticity of the sound. Let's have a listen to that again without the drums and the bass. You can hear it in isolation. I haven't got any effects, well, not meant just some reverb switched on it, but not loads of effects or anything. And have a look and you can see the articulations being used. You'll see the hand positions moving. You'll hear some uh, effects being used as well. <laughs> So you get the idea that especially when that's in a mix, it can sound really sort of authentic indeed. And I'm really loving the tone of this particular plugin, this um, Rickenbacker. Now, there are some other controls on here, which I'll briefly go through. We've got some rough sort of mixer controls. So we can mix the DI sound, the stereo sound. We can also like mix things like our effects in as well and control the volume of those. We also have a pan control here. Now, importantly, we also have a doubling control. Often when we're recording guitars, we will make two recordings of the guitar and pan one left and pan the other one right. Okay, and we get a really nice wide spread. To save you doing that, we have this doubling feature here. So we'll switch that on. And then we'll actually, let's switch it off and hear it without the doubling first. <laughs> Now let's switch it on and just turn it up a little bit. Now, especially if you're listening on headphones, you're really going to hear that. It's a lovely wide sound. Another thing we can do, this sort of relates to our sort of hand position, is set the capo position, okay? So this is like putting a capo or capo, as some people say in different parts of the world, on the guitar. Now, this is like a transpose feature, but remember, because we're forcing the uh, guitar to be played up above that, then we're going to get the authentic tone of the guitar as it's being played up in that position, okay? So that's uh, what the capo does there. Um, it's, so it's a little bit more sophisticated than just using transpose in your door or something like that, okay? So uh, really, really handy that that's there. All of these things, when you use all of these features, will add to the authenticity of the sound. But another really important feature in terms of changing the sound is amplification. <laughs> this is the Ample Sound 65 Delight, a new amp which comes with this new Rickenbacker guitar. And of course, we can change the sound by using the controls on the amp. We've got, you know, treble, middle, bass here. Um, we've also got uh, an overdrive section or high gain section here as well. That's going to make it a lot more gritty. But we can swap out the amp itself. So at the moment, we, we're using this amp and it sounds like this. But if we move over to, say, this one, we get a different tone again. And then we've got this one. And then some more, like, high-gain stuff. Maybe not so suitable for this guitar, but could sound good. I mean, not so much for this guitar, but maybe just that guitar part. So we can change the amp 
you know the amp sound like that by choosing different models okay now the other thing that we can do is change the way that this amplifier is virtually sort of mic'd up and things if we click on this button up here we'll go over here we can see the amp now it's got a couple of microphones on it we can swap out those microphones for some other sort of famous ones yeah so this one here at the moment we'll just swap it out you can see a few choices there there's some famous condenser microphones some ribbon microphones etc etc so we can swap those out and then we can mix all of that over here using this mixer control we can mix in the room sound the di sound of the guitar the sound of the amp itself there so we can really craft our own sound in the same way both a guitarist and a recording engineer would now one of the things i did to the guitar in the demo was to apply some compression and for that i used the built-in compressor which comes with this particular plugin you can see it working here now this was primarily to control some of the louder strums which i had later on in the piece which were kind of poking out a little bit and were a bit piercing now i could have just reduced the velocities of those strums but i did like the tone i was getting at those higher velocities so i just wanted the volume to be down so that's why I used this compressor. I also used the built-in EQ, which you can see working here, just to add a little bit of glassiness to the 2K range there, and also to control the low end of things, stop that getting too muddy. I use the built-in echo feature as well, which I sort of think of more as a delay. Now, this was um, working on the left and right channels. As you can see here, you can set different timings for the left and right channels. You can blend them together. And also had this in sync with the tempo um, of my door, okay, just to make sure that those repeats were in time with the music. And finally, I also use the built-in reverb. Very simple to use. You just set different room sizes here. You can set up the size over here as well, pre-delay, etc. Now, all of these effects are used at least in all of the Ample Sound plugins that I've used. I've got a feeling they are um, at least on all the version three versions of all of their plugins. Really handy that they're built in like this and they're all just good enough so that you can adapt them really well without being too complex. So I created my demo just by playing the notes on the keyboard, yeah, like so. You know, playing the key switches and then just recording that in my door where I could actually edit my performance on the piano roll view, which I think almost all doors actually have. And I like to work in that particular way, but that might not suit you, okay? It might not be your way of thinking about things. So it's nice that Ample Sound do provide some different methodologies for creating performances. One of the things you can do is go over to the strum, uh, sorry, to the riffer feature over here. Um, this is a different sort of way of looking at things. Each of the first six lines here that we can see represents a string on the guitar. This is very much like tablature, okay? And here we can just input a note for that string. So I'll just input a note there. And if I drag up and down, I can select the actual pitch or the fret position for that string. So we're doing things on a string by string basis. We can adjust the duration like so, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one of the things that we can do. Another thing we can do is insert whole chords. So if we go down to this line down here, so these first six lines are the strings on the guitar, but these last are a little bit different. Um, if we go down to this one, we can put in a strum. So I'll just do that. There's a C major chord I can change its duration there and also I can drag up and down to change the chord itself and you can see that that chord has appeared there so that's one other way of inputting things there and we can also add our effects yeah so and as well as those effects if we do have a note in there like so then we can change the articulations we can change say the sustain here to a palm mute we can you know, put in slide in, slide out, all the different things that we had available to us before. So we can, this is just a really different way of inputting performances and it may suit you and your way of thinking. Now, one of the things which is sort of more difficult to do, and I'll just get rid of all of those. One of the things that's more difficult to do with my method and with this in a way is strumming, okay? Strumming, if you want to get it to sound good, can be quite time consuming. Now, if you just want a really quick result with strumming, if it's just in there in the mix and you don't need it to 
be particularly detailed or authentic, then you can make use of the strummer feature. Okay. So the, uh, the thing that we're looking at here in this area is we're looking at the actual strum pattern, this current pattern. We've got different patterns that we can choose. And you can see there's different sort of strum articulations, if you like. There's downstrokes, there's upstrokes. You can play different notes, different strings individually to create arpeggios in with it as well. Um, with this current pattern, it's sounding like this. Very standard kind of a strum pattern. Now it's playing a C major chord over there um, because we've got C major selected. We could select a different chord. And we can change what type of chord it is there. So that's a D um, minor chord at the moment. You can select the different types there. Okay, so you can set up your the chords that you're using in your song. And then you can actually play all of this on your actual keys. Okay, so you can play this performance, switch from one pattern to another using different keys. So yeah, Strummer is another great way of just quickly getting things going um, with your particular song. Um, and the third methodology we have is not so much a way of sort of playing things, but a way of importing performances uh, because we also have um, this tab view as well. So if we go over to the tab view, um, we can actually import some uh, particular types of files in here. Okay, some uh, tab files of a few different types, and you can import those directly in here and then play them from within the plugin itself. Okay, so some different ways of controlling this instrument. Now, if you head over to the Ample Sound website at the moment, and I think you should, you'll see that there's a winter sale on. That includes this new Rickenbacker guitar that we've been looking at in today's video. So if we head up to the purchase tab here, you will see that currently, let's just scroll down a little, you will see that currently this particular guitar, it's right at the top there, should be $119. They're selling it for $89. $9. That's incredibly good value for a plug-in of this quality, I've got to tell you. Now, I'm also going to invite you to listen to the demo at the beginning again, but also this time, why don't you have a listen to the bass guitar? Because in the demo, I was using one of Ample Sound's bass guitar. I'll just show you here. It's the ABP, the Precision Fender Precision Bass. I use this on a lot of my tracks, one of my favorite bass sounds. Um, that is currently $95, okay? I can't stress how useful this plugin could be to you. So, you know, if you want to save a little bit of money, then I would think about snatching that one as well. Don't forget to follow the link, which is down in the description below. Let me know in the comments down below if you're thinking about adding this plugin to your shopping list, or maybe you've already bought it before the video even ended. And why wouldn't you, while these plugins are at such a great price, while you're checking out the prices on Ample Sound's webpage, why don't you take a look at their Strat Virtual Instrument? I made a video about that right here.